Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to pick up from where I left off in the last one, so this will be part three. We're going to take that L298N board, and in the last video, we connected it to a motor. And in this episode, or in this video, we're going to connect it to a rotary encoder and add a Hall effect. That way we can control the speed and we can collect the RPMs. Now, I don't know if I'll accurately collect the RPMs, but I'll collect it enough to you'll get the idea. Now, this is the configuration we'll be using for this. It's pretty much the same. In the last drawing, instead of that 7800 chip over there, I had a battery or something in place. But it's the same concept. It's, an, it's a separate power supply to run the motor. But I've added that Hall Effect device over on the right. And on this drawing, I have it running to pin number 11 or pin number 10. But I'm actually going to use pin number 11 in the, uh, in the Arduino. I could take a chance and try and edit it as I go in the video, but I'm not going to do that. I already have a script written, and it's using pin number 11. And then I have the rotary encoder connected in pins um, 2, 3, and 4. And the reason that I selected 2, 3, and 4 is they equate to when I use the secondary serial port using that soft serial. And when I switch this out to the Nexion display, I'll replace that rotary encoder with the Nexion display. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. The only other change is, is instead of using the left side of the L298N, I end up using the right side just because that it worked better for this video and the way I shoot it when I have the camera on it. Now I'm going to pick up the coding from where I left off, so I'll be editing the file from the last video. And what I want to do is I'm going to base these RPMs on a second instead of half a second, so I need to change my async delay to one second. And this will make, just make it easier to do the math to calculate up the RPMs. And in the past two videos, we didn't even use the async delay. That'll be something we're going to implement in this video. Also, I'm not going to be using the software serial because we're going to use pins 2 and 3 for the rotary encoder. So I'm going to comment this out. And then I'm also going to have to comment serial 2 out down here. Because we're going to bring that in in the next video, so I want to leave the code in place and then I'll just pull the rotary encoder the next time. We're going to have to add some things to this motor config. And what I did in the past is we were using motor A, 5, 6, and 7, instead of 8, 9, and 10. We're still going to use 5, 6, and 7, but I'm going to flip the wires and have them run the motor B. And I'll show you that in the live, or in the live camera when we get to that. But what I've added is I've added these three variables. So we can have motor direction, which in this video we're not going to change direction. We're just going to do RPMs in one direction. But we also need to keep track of our motor rate. So we're going to use our pulse width modulated rate. We're going to start it at 120. And then we're going to start with the motor disabled. So the motor won't be turning. For the Hall effect, we're going to use pin number 11. The drawing, I believe, had 10, but we're going to use 11. And then I'm going to keep track of the counter and the state. So we need these two variables to use the Hall effect. And we'll, I'll show you that in the code. And then we're also adding a rotary encoder. So the variables are going to be the directions are A and B. That's how you calculate that. And then there's a switch tied to the rotary controller. So we're going to use pin 4 for that. So pin 2 will be A, pin 3 will be B, and then the switch will be pin 4. And then I need some variables. We'll need to keep track of A, what A was. We're going to call that A past, and what A is, which is the present, because that's how we pick up to determine that the rotary encoder has been turned. And then we use the B variable to tell us the direction. So we'll read that, and that'll tell us whether we're going clockwise or counterclockwise. And then I've added this switch variable, because we're going to use that. So if I press the rotary encoder, it'll stop the fan from spinning. Now in the setup, we're going to use the serial port, but I did disable the serial too. Otherwise, we're going to leave the motor pretty much the same. We're going to set the Hall effect to be an input. So the Hall effect sensor is going to be an input. The rotary encoder pins also, rotary A, B, and switch, they're all going to also be inputs. And that's all we have to do to the setup is we just had to add the Hall effect and the uh, rotary encoder. 
Now in the loop itself, we were using, we were just statically turning the motor on in the last video, and then we would turn it off and change direction. We're just going to delete that for now. So we're going to take care of the turning the motor on and going one direction. I'm going to delete turning the motor off. I'm going to delete turning it in the opposite direction. And then I'm going to delete turning it off again. So at this point our loop does absolutely nothing. What we want it to do is we're going to want it to initially read the Hall Effect device. So for the Hall Effect we're going to digitally read the sensor pin, pin 11. And if it's not equal to the current state then we know that it's changed. And if it's changed, we'll set it to the current state and we're going to increment that counter. So every time through this loop, it's going to see if that's changed and it'll just increment that counter and never stop. So we'll need to put a check into that because at this point it would just count up forever. And that's how we're going to read that Hall Effect sensor. So in other words, every time the fan spins around, it's going to pick that up. Now I really didn't go over how the Hall Effect sensor works. What I've done is I've glued magnets, two separate magnets, on, on opposite sides of the fan. So every time the fan rotates, it'll count up by two. And the Hall Effect sensor itself just looks like a little transi transistor. And every time the magnet gets in contact with it, it just changes its state. And in this way, we'll count every time through this loop. We'll see if it's changed state, and we'll count one to that counter. So for the rotary encoder, we have the two variables. We have A and B. We also have the inputs A and B. So for A present, we're just going to digitally read rote A, which is that pin, that input. And we're going to read B at the same time. So we're going to read those two pins. And if A present is not equal to A past, in other words, we're going to see if it's changed, then we're going to run this if loop. And then in that if loop, we just say, is A present equal to B or not equal to B? And depending upon whether a present is equal or not, we'll determine the direction. And that gets a little bit funny. If you don't, if it doesn't spin the way you think it is, then just switch it and then it, just change it. Because sometimes you'll think one is clockwise and the other one isn't, but it just depends on the way you have your motor set up. So in this case, if a present is not equal to B, then we're assuming it's spinning clockwise. And we're also going to enable the motor and we're going to set in one, we're going to analog write that pulse width mod modulated rate, which is going to start at 120. So the first time that this runs, if we turn that rotary encoder, it'll start running at that 120. And we're also going to increase it by one. So every time we turn it one direction, it's going to go up by one. And then else, if A is not e or is equal to B, then it's going to run this else condition and it's also going to enable the motor, so it doesn't matter which way we turn it, we're going to enable it, and it will subtract down here, motor pulse width rate minus minus. Now we're never going to let the pulse rate get below 50, and we're never going to let it get above 255. And then at the end here, we just set A past equal to A present, so that way we know up here if it's changed the next time through. I have a whole video on this, so I'll, I'll put a link in the description. And then we're going to add one more thing for that switch. So we're going to read that rotary switch. If it's equal to zero, because normally when you're not touching it, it reads as a one or a high. So if we read it as a zero, we're going to shut the motor down. We're going to turn our input one to low. We're going to do our input two to low, which will shut that motor off. And just as a refresher, if you look at N1 and N2, we'll go up to the top. N1 and N2 are set up as outputs and those are what drive the motor itself. So if you have one set high, it's going to spin one direction. If you have two set high, it'll spin the other direction. And in this case, we're just going to set them both to low. So this will just stop the motor. Whatever direction it's spinning, it'll stop. And we're going to serial print switches pressed. And this little if loop right here is where we collect the data from the next gen display. I'm going to leave it in place, but I'm not going to uncomment it. If I did, I'd have an error because of the variable serial 2. Now, if you're using a mega, you could probably get away with this. But for us, we're just going to leave it commented out. And the same down here. This is where I do some error checking, or if something random is sent from the next gen display, it'll show up down here, and it'll, it'll let me know that something's going on. 
But as far as the asynchronous delay, this is the area we're going to work on today. So I'm going to uncomment it and I've simplified it just a little bit. And all this is going to do is every second, we're just going to run this right down here. And for this example, I'm still turning the LED on and off. And if you look through some of my old videos, it'll explain this rollover. I'm not going to go into that for this video. Here we're going to calculate the RPM. We're not actually going to do it correctly. We're going to multiply whatever we've counted up times 3. So in that second, however many times that fan has spun around, we're collecting 2 changes for every 1 rotation, and we're going to multiply that times 3. So this isn't going to be true RPMs, but this will give you an idea of what's going on. So we're just going to have a variable called RPM, and we're going to take our current HE counter and we're going to multiply it by 3. And then we're going to print it out. So we're going to print out our pulse width modulated rate, which is, which is changed when we change that rotary encoder. So we'll print out our rate, and then we're going to print out our RPM. So we'll be able to see it on the serial monitor. I'll also have a camera on the actual fan itself so you can see it spin and see the change. So we'll print all that out but we need to reset the HE counter. So We'll add this one line down here, we'll set the HE counter to zero. So that way when it exits the loop it has to start counting again. And then we'll go through this again. So every second we should be printing this out to the screen. I'm going to upload this now and show you on the display and go over this. Okay, so what I have here is this is the motor up here and this is the Arduino down here and then you can see the rotary encoder. And right now I don't have it powered. What I've done is I'm using this side of the driver because the wires that run my little motor didn't reach to the other side, so I've switched it. So all I did was I took the pins from one side of the driver board and moved it to the other. So it should work just fine. Right now I don't have any power to it, so it's not spinning. But you'll see when I plug it in, it'll start to spin, and then I'll, I'll push this button here and it'll stop. And you can see that it stopped. Now I'll pull up the, um, the serial monitor. And you can see we've pushed this um, switch pressed right here. So the rate then went from, because it was spinning, down to zero. And so now it's not spinning. But once I turn this knob, it's going to start spinning. And you can see we're getting 17,000 RPM, which we know isn't exactly right. But And now I'm going to start turning the knob up. And it wants to lift off the table. It's going so fast. But you can see we're up to 20,000 RPM. And you can see our pulse width modulated rate is at 159. Now I'm going to turn it down. We'll try to go all the way to 50 and see what we get. And at 50 it almost stops turning, but we're at 63, 6200 RPM. And like I said, that's not accurate. The RPM is not. But it gives you a good idea of how it works. And it works fairly smoothly. This was a fairly simple transition to the rotary encoder and the Hall effect. But I wanted to have this in-between video because in the next video, I'm going to make, instead of having this little fan, I'm going to make the fan a little bit bigger, and I'm going to incorporate the Nexion display. For those of you that like these videos for the Nexion display, I want to put that in there. So what we'll have to do is we'll put some sort of slider and maybe direction control on it too so we can have it go up and down and, and maybe even add a delay at some point. If there is something specific to this project that you think would tie in, feel free to put something in the comments and I'll add that to the video. Even if it creates another video, that's fine. And just for a quick review, we've added this Hall Effect device and we're using pin 11. We added this rotary encoder and we're using pins 2, 3, and 4. 
and that was selected specifically because we're going to replace it with an action display on 2 and 3. The inputs we had to add in the setup portion down here. And then I show, I talked a little bit about how to read the Hall effect. And we just check for the state of that sensor. And when it's, if it's changed, then we know that the magnet is in front of it. And it's the same thing with the rotary encoder. If the, if the state is changed, then we know that we're turning it one way or the other. Now, I didn't change from clockwise to counterclockwise. And I also didn't use this motor enable. I don't know if anyone noticed that, but I didn't use the motor enable. Instead, what we did was down here in the switch, we turned the input 1 to low and the input 2 to low. And up here, we wrote to input 1, we wrote the pulse width modulated directly to input 1. When you're using this L298N, you can do it two different ways. I'm going to go back up to the where we set it up. So on the L298N, you have this, these uh, different ways to control the pulse width modulated. You can send it, you can send the pulse width modulation to a separate pin, and then you can turn N1 and N2 on and off, and then it will control based upon that pulse width modulated signal, and that's on a separate pin. But you can also send the pulse width modulated directly into N1 or N2. And the reason that I switched that is because I'm also looking at a smaller board that doesn't have the separate input for the pulse width modulated input. And there's really no problem with sending the pulse width modulated signal directly into N1 or N2 on that driver board. And that's how we did it for this example. Now as we go forward, go back down, as we go forward, we may have to use this motor direction pin up here. So it may change a little bit in how we do things. But I, I'm trying to show you different ways in these videos. So in this case, we used, we went directly to the input 1 and input 2 right here. And those are configured to send the pulse width modulated directly to the device. And then we configured this asynchronous delay because we couldn't have it statically set anymore, so we need to do it through a variable. And so every second we made it so we can check that, read out the counter, and also display the current rate that we're at. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.